Hello and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. I'm Sarah and today I have my Tarot Shelf 2022 video for you. Um, I'm squeaking it in just under the wire here on December 31st and this was a request that was made and something I was kind of thinking about doing anyway. My tarot collection has shifted a lot since the last time I posted one of these at the end of 2020 so I wanted to just take you through and see what I have on that shelf back behind me um, and see what the latest uh, kind of iteration of my tarot collection is. Um, I don't know that it's going to stay exactly the same but I would say that my collecting has really calmed down in the last eight to ten months or so. I haven't added that many new decks and I've kind of gotten to a place where I'm pretty happy with my collection the way it is. Um, there are a few unknowns and a few decks that I need to work with a little bit to see if I'm going to hang on to them long term. Um, but as of now I don't have a really long wish list and I don't have a big call list either. So I would love to know what the status of your collection is these days. If you want to drop a comment or a link if you've made this video yourself, uh, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll just say again, Happy New Year. I hope 2023 brings you all many blessings, and I feel very uh, happy to be continuing to make tarot content for you, and I'll see you again very soon. All right, since I started off the last video with a little tour of my room, I thought I'd recap what my desk space looks like. This is where I sit when I record my videos. Up there on the wall on the right, you have the uh, sun card from the Yokai Yochi Tarot. That's a print that I bought from the artist. And on the left are a couple of small pieces of artwork that I featured in my last video. They were over by my tarot shelf, but they've been relocated to make room for some other things. I have my prayer flags up, of course. Um, a few crystals and things on the uh, windowsill there, and I look out onto trees. It's nighttime now, so you can see the lights that my husband put up in the yard. Um, and then down here on my desk, I just have a new laptop stand and a new ring light to make um, filming a lot easier for me. And then, of course, I've been heavy into like journaling and end of year, start of year readings, and so um, I've got quite a few things out. I do try to keep it a little tidier than this, but uh, that's what it looks like today. So moving over to the other side of the room, we have my bookcase where I keep my tarot supplies uh, and my entire library on tarot. On the left here, we have a poster from the band Mo, uh, which is one of our favorite bands. And um, here is the main part of the tarot collection. It spans a couple of made shelves that sit on top of this bookcase. And then the top part of this bookshelf down below there, we have um, kind of a reorganized setup. Um, on the middle shelf are some tarot books, journals, um, and then my Buddhist studies texts. Um, not all of which I'm reading. Some of them are um, beyond where I am right now on my Buddhist path, but um, you know, I'll be reading those eventually. And then down below that are knitting books and uh, a mess <laughs> down there, but uh, knitting books, notebooks, and things like that. So let's focus on the tarot stuff here. Um, I'll go sort of on the shelf here and then I'll go top to bottom uh, with the collection. So on the left here we have some guidebooks and some general books about tarot. I've definitely thinned this out and reorganized it since the last time I showed, uh, showed this. Some of these are guidebooks that I'm going to be reading in 2023. So in my December update I mentioned that I have a list of 12 books that I want to read on tarot one a month and it's many of these guidebooks that I've never really th thumbed through or looked through thoroughly. So um, and part of that is an evaluation process. I'm going to be deciding whether I'll keep uh, certain decks that I'm on the fence about in in part based on their guidebook. Not entirely but um, that will be a factor. So uh, after that we have the big big box for the Grateful Dead Tarot. I keep the cards out so I can access them but this is the big um, collector's edition box as well as the hardbound book that came with it. Um, here we have the Starman Tarot Kit. This is the larger version of the kit that, um, from Oscar Bayo. You can also get just the cards by themselves but I wanted the guidebook with it. Um, here we have some tarot decks that I'm not entirely sure that I'll be keeping long term. Um, so at the top is the Light in the Mist. I think I will be keeping this one for a good long while, at least until we work through all the puzzles. Um, this is a, a sort of choose your own adventure built around a tarot deck. 
Um, but the deck itself does not feature people, and so we'll see how I get on with it as a reading deck um, on its own terms. This is the Tarot of the Divine, and I do have the larger guidebook um, or storybook beneath the moon that goes with it. I love the art in this deck, but I never use it, so I've been thinking about whether I'm going to keep it long term. Um, the Jeff Ridzi Tarot, which I really like um, certain cards in here, but I am again, not using it very much. And I think part of it is the size of the cards and the stiffness of the card stock. It's kind of hard to handle. And then this is the Wild Unknown, the big kit with the book, um, which again, I need to use in a reading. It's not one that I chose. I got it from a friend. And again, I'm not quite sure if long-term, if this is gonna be for me or not. But for now, I'm gonna be working with all these over the next year and see how that works out. Over here, we have kind of Oracle and playing cards because they don't fit nicely in the rest of the collection, but I'll talk about these decks uh, next. Um, so here we have some kind of collectible items that don't fit up in the smaller shelves. This is the Kaishobu Tarot, uh, the one that is the first or one of the earliest Japanese uh, printed and produced decks, and it features Marseille woodblock style artwork with um, the Pamela Coleman Smith poses for the characters. This is um, the J.K. Waite Tarot, which is a recolored, redrawn version of the RWS deck, also an early Japanese deck. And this is Tarot Fortune Telling Game. This is the one J.J. Swiss um, packaged as a family game um, with a game board and a rule book and, well, or not rule book, but guidebook um, around the one J.J. Swiss uh, Besançon deck that Stuart Kaplan produced. So I showed this last time. This is the hair poster um, from the 1960s production of the musical, which features Frank Albano's version of the lover's card. And I have it up here with this version of the lover's card, which is a recolored version from the Hoi Polloi Tarot that Brant of uh, Moon Baby um, put out for his Moon Baby Tarot deck. He was kind enough to send me a copy of his deck and this is the promotional card and I'm so happy that uh, he sent me the lovers because I just love this image and I love sort of his version of it as well. Then on this top row we have some collector's edition historical decks from Giordano Berti of Renascimento Italiana Art. Um, you can find him on Etsy and he produces really beautiful uh, historic reproductions. So here we have his Solabusca. This is the gilded version uh, with the gold edging. We have the Tarocchi Vergnano Tarot, um, which is an Italian uh, style deck. And then over here, we have the Miller of 1780. Um, and this is the one where everybody's wearing big wigs like um, Bach or, or Beethoven. And I love this deck. This is also a base in song. Uh, as you can see, it has Juno, um, and then it also has Jupiter as the number five card. And then this is the Fudras from 1845. This one features all Chinese characters as the people in this deck, and it's been watercolored, water tinted very beautifully. I love the colors in this deck. So panning out here, I can point out that these are going to be my early tarots and kind of French and Swiss influence. Down here on this shelf, we have playing cards and then we have Spanish and Italian decks. Up here on this top row, we have uh, RWS and RWS influence decks. And then down here, we kind of have a mix of some more RWS that don't fit up here and some tarots that are sort of their own system. They kind of do their own thing. Um, so I'll walk you through those. First in these bags, um, these are all made by Moonlit Fay, and my mom has been kind enough to give me some bags for tarot decks that either ha didn't have packaging or um, that came with weird packaging, and so I keep them in these little wallets. Um, these two are the ones that I inherited from my relative who died a couple years ago. So back here, I have my very grubby uh, copy of the Blushing Fool RWS from the early 70s. And then I also have a 19, or 1968 or 69 version of the um, Frank Albano deck. 
And then over here, I keep my Nightmare Before Christmas cards in here and the cards for the Grateful Dead Tarot in this lovely psychedelic bag um, that fits, fits it perfectly. Well, folks, I was looking for my magical chopstick of pointingness, but uh, I couldn't find it, so we're going to go with a pen today. All right, so uh, these again are early tarot. So here we have the Anonymous Tarot of Paris by Edition Civilixi. I really like this and I love the cardstock. I just wish they would do a cleaned up version of this. Um, on top here, we have the Heather Hall Rosenwald. And I have that in uh, the Minchiati format. My mom bought me the extra cards to go with it. So it also has Signs of the Zodiac and um, all the other Minchiati stuff with it. Down here we have the Sullivan Hisman's uh, Tarot Sheet Revival is the name of his company. And that is the Budapest Tarot. And these two, as well as these two, I've actually made boxes for because none of these came with boxes. So next to these, we have some uh, decks by Pablo Robledo. And I was very, very happy to add both of these this year. I was particularly looking for his Vandenbor, which is this one here. Um, but I also picked up a copy of his Besançon, which is kind of a, a mishmash of different um, tarot influences. He drew from a variety of early um, Tarot de Marseille and Tarot de Besançon art to make his own version there. Next to that, we have the El Verdandero Tarot de Marseille. It's also just known as Tarot de Marseille from the Fournier uh, printing company. This is a uh, version from the 1970s featuring brightly colored backgrounds. And then here we have my Yves Renault deck. This is the Tarot Gasman. Um, and then that is right next to the Tarot Classic for, by Stuart Kaplan, which draws a lot of similarities from this Gasman Tarot. Over here, we have the a modern uh, kind of Tarot de Marseille section. So I have the Tarot de Marseille of the New Incarnation uh, in this darker box here. And this has fully illustrated pips, but they're not um, RWS clone uh, illustrations. They're actually based on fables and tales from the time period, so from the 14 and 1500s, which I think is a cool take on trying to do uh, an illustrated Marseille deck. Um, up here, we have the Tarot de Maria Cilia by Leonard Jim Narciso. This is a tarot in, the, in a tin produced by US Games, and I love it for traveling. Um, here are two tarots by The Wandering Oracle. Uh, this is the Marshmallow Marseille and the Tarot Cyrene. Moving down a shelf, we have a little section of tarot and playing card hybrids. We have the Playing Marseille by Ryan Edward. This one is the Mineo Maya Tarot. Um, that's the artist's name, and it's a, another Japanese deck that incorporates uh, playing card pips and then uh, illustrated majors and court cards. Here we have the Angel Tarot, also produced by um, the Angel Playing Card Company, which is where the name comes from, but with the guidance from Stuart Kaplan, he was definitely involved in this production. And this is um, based on the Claude Burdell, but it has um, hybrid pips that show both Marseille and French suits, as does this deck up here. This says tarot cards on it. And this is by Ian Cumstey, and this is called the Rare Triumphs deck. It has the same pips um, as the Pike and Clover playing card deck that he also produced. Here we have a very rare deck uh, produced originally by Grimaud in France, and it's called the Tarot de Rouat Nisanka. It has um, artwork that reflects the culture, the ancient culture of Sri, of Sri Lanka on it. And Maria, Maria Nuste, I believe is how you pronounce her name, is the artist for this one. This is the Spanish tarot, also produced by Fournier, so you'll see this similarity in the packaging uh, to this deck. And this one also has bright colors. It doesn't have the brightly colored backgrounds, but it has beautiful, beautiful pips, and I love the colors in this one. Continuing on in the Spanish section, so we have the Spanish tarot, we have this tarot de fuego, also produced by Fournier, same people as this. Uh, this one is a very modern, very sort of, I don't know, almost like punk art kind of uh, approach to tarot. Um, very unconditional um, imagery on the cards, but I love it. Lots of fire, lots of blood. Um, the artist for this is Richard C Cavolo. Cavolo. And then down here we have Tarot Mirandi, also by a Spanish artist. Um, this is the historic Taroki Perrin, produced in 1880 originally, and this is just a, a very cheap um, reproduction of it I got um, as a new old stock off eBay. 
Um, this is Carte Fine al Mundo, Tarocco Bolognese, uh, restored by Marco Benedetti, and he actually expanded it back to a full tarot pack. So originally, this Tarocco Bolognese game would have been played with an abbreviated deck that had fewer pips, um, but Marco included um, a, a full array of pips so that you can read it like a full tarot deck. Back behind here, you can't see my two modern Italian decks. Um, that are two copies of the uh, Triumphi della Luna by Patrick Valenza. Um, I have the paradoxical blue version with the Beast Pack expansion, which I don't really use in those cards, but um, that's the version that was available. And then I also have a Triumphi della Luna, um, the regular coloration with uh, Italian titles, which I really like. It's got kind of beige and earth tones, and I enjoy that. And then from modern to quite ancient, this is the Visconti Tarot. It's the mini version that has the more historically accurate tower and devil cards that are more similar to what the Rosenwald and other tarots of this era probably looked like. So um, if you can pick up this little tiny one from Los Garabeo, it's out of print, but it's it's around. You can find copies of it. And then speaking of Los Garabeo, um, we also have the Tarocco Soprafino that was released as part of their historic series, this um, Anima Antiqua um, limited edition, um, limited only to like 4,000 of these decks or something like that, but they did sell out. Los Garabeo did an excellent job with this particular reproduction. Uh, they don't always do a good job. Sometimes they do weird cropping. They'll change uh, the hairstyles and facial features of certain characters. So I don't always understand their choices, but in this particular one, they did an excellent job. This baby is my Navy di Giovanni Vecchetta. It's my favorite historic Italian deck, and I absolutely love, um, especially the court cards in this deck. All right, so moving on to the modern deck selection here, um, we have a first edition of the University Books Rider Waite Smith deck produced in 1960 in the US, uh, the first full color version of this deck to be legitimately published in this country. Then we have the 1909 uh, art restoration deck. Um, and this one is based on the roses and lilies deck from an actual scan of a, an existing copy. Here we have the Tarot Banksy. Um, I don't talk about this deck because I don't use it a ton, but I absolutely love this deck. If you want a slap in the face, get yourself a copy of this. It's still in print on Etsy. Um, here we have the Cosmic Tarot by Norbert Loesch, another kind of hard-hitting deck, but a really good, very expansive, and um, I enjoy the fine detail in the artwork on this one. This is probably the standout deck for me of this year. This is the Maraloon Tarot, very soft, beautiful watercolor deck um, available on Make Playing Cards. Here we have the Fifth Spirit uh, Tarot deck. I'm really grateful to Laura of Aquamarine 18 for um, prompting me to take another look at this deck. I'd kind of written it off, but I was able to pick up a copy of the independent version before it went completely unavailable from booksellers and so, um, or for, from indie tarot shops. So I'm really glad to have a copy of this. It's a great reader and I love, love, love it. Um, I really like the pips in this deck too. And here we have another new addition to my collection this year. This is Tarot of the Sweet Twilight. And part of the reason I'm uh, thinking about getting rid of the Tarot Japrize is that this one is also quite um, surrealist in nature in its artwork. And I like, I just find the artwork a little bit more relatable. So I haven't made a final decision there, but if I do get rid of one, I'll be keeping this one and probably getting rid of the Japrize. Here is the deck for the Moon Baby Tarot. This is the first edition. I think the second edition is now available, which just has um, a different box. It doesn't, it, uh, Brandt kept the cards basically the same, and it's a really fun recoloring of the Hoi Polloi on excellent, excellent, amazing cardstock. I love it. Um, here we have the Yarn Tarot, which almost went away this year, and then I reconsidered it because um, it's got great fashion choices, it's got uh, diversity, um, it's got a sense of humor, and it's a pretty good reader. Um, a lot of the pip cards are pretty plain, but when you lay uh, multiple cards out in a spread, it, it works well, and it goes with an oracle. So I'll get back to the oracles in just a second. 
All right, and down here we have the kind of miscellaneous pile. Um, the Druidcraft is, you know, fairly close to an RWFS, but it's taken the Christianity out of that deck. So this is from a, a Druid and Pagan perspective, and it's changed a few of the cards to be more uh, in line with those um, philosophies. This Forest Friends stationery box holds my copy of the Gaian Tarot. I have the Llewellyn edition that a friend traded me, and I don't have any of the packaging for it, so it lives in here. This is the Tarot of Mystical Moments, another hit deck from US Games this year. Um, I don't love the card stock. It's big and shiny and slippery, and I managed to buff uh, the um, silver, gil silver gilding off of it or silver edging off of it because it was kind of hurting my hands. So I just still don't love playing around with this deck, but I do love the imagery. It's very dreamy and romantic, and I enjoy it. Here we have Dame Fortune's Wheel Tarot. This one mashes up um, historic, uh, what, what is it called? Charles the Charles the Sixth deck, which is kind of a misnomer, but that's what it's known as. It's a historic um, kind of Tarot de Marseille uh, majors with uh, artwork um, inspired by Atea's keywords for the miners. So um, kind of like the Tarot de Marseille of the New Millennium, it uses very different imagery um, and kind of a, a new narrative style for the minor cards, and it's on my to-study list for this year. This is the Polish Tarot, which has a lot of um, very brightly colored cards. It's a pip deck, but the backgrounds have details in them to give you more to go on. So um, unlike a, a standard Marseille deck that just has arrangements of objects, this one actually has little symbols and things in the background that uh, you can read off of. This is the Sheridan Douglas Tarot, a classic of the 1970s. It's actually still in production by a son of the family, and so you can get uh, get this. This goes with the, the book that I'll be reading um, sometime this year. I'm going to read the uh, Alfred Douglas's take on the tarot and kind of decide if this is going to stay in my collection long term or not. This is my vintage copy of the Tarot Balby. You can only get this in a vintage copy. Um, and it sells for too much money. I got mine on a good deal on eBay a couple of years ago because I lucked out and mine's not in perfect shape, but it's usable. Um, it's kind of a weird, brightly colored esoteric pip deck and it's, it's a bit strange, but I like having it in my collection for some reason. So I'll continue hanging on to it. I'll, I'll see if I can read with it at some point. In this unassuming box, we have the Inspired Soul Tarot by Julie of Peekaboo Rose. I um, just have it in this kind of standard box for my playing cards. I might decorate it at some point. It, it deserves a little more color. Um, it is a colorful and fun deck, and it gives sort of um, a mix of serious and light and breezy uh, when I read for it. It's, it's, it's a nice one. It's very chatty and conversational. It's like having a cup of tea with a friend. Um, this is the Science Tarot, and I want to thank Will of Atypical Tarot for turning me onto this deck. It's really powerful, and it relates science concepts to the tarot in a way I've never seen before, and to me, it makes complete sense. So I love this um, for study and for kind of comparing uh, interpretations of cards. Here we have the Hieronymus Bosch Tarot, and this is um, basically a slice and dice um, version of a deck pulled from the works of the larger murals of Hieronymus Bosch. Um, I don't think that the author did a very good job with the guidebook. They kind of made up a bunch of fake history and justification for the imagery in the cards. However, I do really like the images that they chose. Bosch is hilarious and he's a huge influence on Patrick Valenza, um, and so I love having this in my collection. It's a little weird to read with, as you might imagine, but I have gotten some good readings out of it and I do turn to it um, sort of on special occasions. And this is the Shimmering Veil Tarot by Scylla Conway. Um, I have used this in some really powerful readings, but I don't generally use this for myself. It seems to be one that I use mostly for other people. But this is her deck. It has abstract art, um, but the uh, tarot imagery, if you look closely, um, is tied with the RWS. So it's not completely um, out there. It's recognizable. It's just that it's quite abstract. So it, it gives you a lot of space to read um, and to do your own interpretations. 
And then the last tarot on this shelf is the Barbara Walker Tarot. This is again going to be another study deck for me this year along with the Big Guidebook. Um, Barbara Walker, I first met her when I got into knitting and so I thought it was really cool uh, to find out that she was also into tarot and wrote a big book and then decided to design a deck of cards to go with her book. So I'm looking forward to reading that and studying with this. This is the only deck in my collection that would be considered like a, a goddess deck, and it's sort of a dark goddess deck. It's got um, entities from a variety of cultures, and so we'll see how she does uh, in terms of, um, you know, honoring culture versus uh, misappropriating it. I'm not really sure yet because I haven't read her book, um, but we'll see how that goes. But I'm, I'm curious to try this out because she was very scholarly, very well studied. So I'm hoping she did a good job. All right, going back to this lower shelf for a minute, um, I talked about those tarot decks. So this is my Oracle and Playing Card collection right here. Um, we'll start with playing cards. Down here in this little tin, I have a set of playing cards that is marked so that you can cheat at poker. Um, this is my Swith, uh, Smith Weight Tarot in a Tin from US Games. Um, it's based on the Centennial Tarot, but it's the, the tin size version. And this is nice for study or for larger spreads or just for taking for travel. Um, so I guess this is not a playing card deck, but it fits in here. So that's what's there. These are the Krampus playing cards. This is a hilarious um, collection of cards based on uh, postcards featuring the Krampus. And uh, Robin of Toadstool Tarot gave this to me a couple years ago, and I absolutely love it. This is a Scopa deck from Italy. It's a, an abbreviated playing card deck. I think it has 42 cards instead of uh, the normal amount. And um, you play a specific fast-paced kind of uh, trick-taking game with this. This is a set of bicycle playing cards, but they're special, um, special design. What are they called? They're called the Stargazer New Moon Playing Cards. My mom got these for me a couple of years ago, and they're like a, a black kind of space background with white pips on them. They're very pretty. And this is the Commoner's Playing Card deck by Ian Cumstie, the author of the Rare Triumphs Tarot. Over here we have the Cosmovisions Tarot and Oracle by James Eads. Uh, this is the Stitcher's Oracle, um, which does not have any words or anything on it. It's just images featuring um, needlecraft, so uh, sewing and knitting and crochet and that kind of thing. Here we have two Edward Goracles. Um, this is the Fantod pack, um, which is kind of a, a joke Lenormand deck where everything is a calamity card and only bad things can possibly befall you. Um, and this is the Helpless Doorknob. This is a, it's kind of a choose your own adventure, piece together a story deck. Each uh, card has like a sentence on it and then you put them together and make a little story. And then this is the Bat's Blood Ink by Monica Bodersky. And um, I love her artwork. I don't love her tarot, um, but I wanted to have some something from her. So this is the deck that I have. So that is my tarot collection for 2022, and uh, I'm only expecting one deck um, to come in January. I actually um, ordered a Minkiati deck that was kickstarted uh, about this time last year and has taken over a year to produce. Um, the producer says they're shipping in January, so I'm hoping that that will fit somewhere up here on this little space. Um, but if not, I may have to reorganize, but I'm pretty proud that everything kind of fits on the shelf nicely. And I'm hoping not to have too many uh, new acquisitions. And like I said, I'm gonna be evaluating some of these guys this year. So we'll see what this looks like. Oh, maybe I'll do this annually for you and just kind of see how things evolve over time. I am curious if any of you have these decks. Um, or if any of these on your wish list or anything like that, let me know in the comments. Um, and until next time, be well, and I will see you soon.